This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Find out more later in the video. Hey everyone, Daniel Rubino here, Windows Central. We're restarting our series, Ask Stan, except now it's going to be called Ask Windows Central because we're going to have Zach Bowden on here and occasionally Jez Corden and other people to join us when we basically feel like it. So this is another series where you get to ask us questions and we're going to try to answer them about Microsoft Surface gaming, computers, phones, and whatever cool tech is out there. So let's start the questions this week, which we're gonna be talking about Windows 10X. What is Sun Valley? And what about ARM devices? Are there other chip makers that are gonna be coming out with new chips for Windows? And what phone do we use for our daily driver? All that and more, stay tuned. All right, first up is Jack, and he's wondering, why would Microsoft cancel Windows 10X? Zach, what do you have? Well, it, it's a complicated answer, really, I think, because there's a lot going on in the Windows world right now, and Microsoft has had trouble recently trying to bring up a modern version of Windows. Windows 10X is a modern version of Windows. It's much more lightweight, it's much more secure, it removes a lot of legacy components. But as a result of that, that means it doesn't run most of the Windows applications you would expect to run, such as legacy Win32 applications like Chrome or Adobe Photoshop. They all run, They well, they were planning to run them via virtualization, but they found that performance in those containers and that virtualization technology isn't very good. So at one point they planned to ship without the virtualization container, but then that's a version of Windows without the majority of Windows apps. So they've been trying to fight back and forth for a while now as to what they should do with Windows 10X. And I think they just sort of came to the conclusion that maybe we should just not do it right now because there's no reason to do it. There's no market for a version of Windows without Windows 10X, uh, without Win32, sorry. So instead what they're doing is they're focusing on Sun Valley. They're trying to sort of refresh Windows desktop and make Windows desktop the best version of Windows they possibly can. Uh, and that makes sense because that's where all 1.3 billion Windows users are, right? This is where the majority of Microsoft users are. So they should be focusing on that market instead of trying to bring up this new version of Windows on a much more modern platform. There is, they should totally try it, but I think right now is not the best time. They should be focusing on uh, just making Windows work well on desktop. And then in the future, when say that the need for Win32 dies down, if that ever happens, then they can start focusing on Windows 10X or another version of Windows Core OS in the future. So next question is from David uh, via an email. He asks, what Surface devices are you expecting to see this year? Uh, so the, the question that we get every year is when new Surface devices are coming out. Now, historically speaking, Microsoft has had refreshes in the spring and then the big stuff come in the fall. And we do expect that to be this year. Obviously the spring was pretty mild, right? We didn't have major devices. So for fall 2021, we are expecting Surface Pro 8. Now we had Surface Pro 7 Plus this year, which was an odd release, but our theory behind that is they want to get that out now for businesses so they can have a separate line for Pro 8. Now, why would they do that? Well, we do expect major changes to Pro 8, not a complete redesign or I don't know. It, it, the fundamentals will still be a Surface Pro, but maybe Thunderbolt 4 for the first time. Maybe it's going to be changing the chassis enough where they're going to need some new accessories. And that's really the issue why Surface Pro 7 Plus exists, which is for IT departments who do not want to change anything, whether it's Surface Dock, their cables. So it allows them to do that. And now also have Surface Pro 8, which will be a little bit more, hopefully, radical of a change. Now, I know a lot of people want an AMD processor. We don't expect that, though. But who knows? We actually don't really have any firm details on Surface Pro 8, which I'm sure Microsoft is actually happy about for once. Uh, but it's safe to say it'll probably be the latest Intel, probably a thinner design. I do expect that pen to be in the keyboard, just like on Pro X. It's going to borrow some of that design language. But we don't really know a whole lot about it. But I do think this will be sort of a major change. Those bezels will also probably be thinner. Uh, so instead of a 12.3 inch, maybe a 12.7 inch, which would be a really nice change as well. Now, in terms of other stuff, Surface Studio 3 is likely on the table. We've been hearing that for a while too, but again, we don't have firm details yet about what that would encompass. There's also Surface Pro X, which seems to now be on a yearly cadence for updates. We do expect that again this year. No major changes to that devices are anticipated, but we do expect a new processor. 
That said, I know the SQ2 for this year was not really a massive upgrade, right? It was about 150 hertz faster, just a little extra push. But SQ3, we are hearing, will be much more powerful. Now, I know everybody's going to bring up Apple M1. We don't think it's going to be as powerful as that, but we do expect a sort of much larger change in terms of performance versus, say, the original SQ1 processor. So this one actually may be the one to watch. It's still one of my favorite devices. And of course, I think the big one is Surface Duo version 2. And yes, we do expect that coming out. We're very confident in that. Uh, we There are details around that that we're expecting. We've said it before that Surface Duo version 1 was originally a Windows 10 device or a Windows 10 flavor that was going to be a pocketable Surface computer. So when you ask, you know, why is it not a very good phone? That's why. They just took the hardware, recycled it, and threw in Android at the last minute. So what happens when they now have a chance to build a version 2 and it's actually going to be built around a phone? Well, I think it's safe to say things like NFC, a modern processor, better cameras will be on board and that's going to be very exciting but i think that's sort of the low-hanging fruit i think all this stuff is expected from surface duo version 2 and it won't disappoint in terms of hardware i really think people are going to be blown away by the quality of the hardware the real question is the software we haven't seen a lot of changes with android and dual screen support with just mild improvements here and there they're still basically getting their sea legs that's going to be the real story with version two. Can they improve the software? All right, next up, a question we get asked all the time. What is Sun Valley? Zach, what's the answer to that interesting question? Oh, where do I begin? So <laughs> Sun Valley is a UI effort internally at Microsoft that aims to reinvigorate the Windows desktop user interface uh, with new features, new iconography, new sounds, new animations. Uh, and just making Windows generally prettier to look at. Uh, right, uh, right now, Windows is sort of an old looking operating system. It's very familiar uh, and it's been the same since Windows 10 was first introduced back in 2015, more or less. Uh, so with Sun Valley, Microsoft is building a refreshed interface to sort of bring it into the more modern time. You know, Mac OS has done this, iOS has done this, other platforms have gone through design refreshes before, but Windows 10 hasn't. So this will be Windows 10's first major uh, design refresh. Uh, and that we should expect to see things like an updated start menu, a new action center, like I said, uh, smoother or fluid, uh, more fluid animations. It's gonna be really interesting. And I think the way they're delivering Sun Valley will be interesting as well. But I think for most people uh, are going to be super excited about uh, some of the UI stuff coming later this year and Sun Valley is coming uh, at least we expect it to launch in the fall uh, and Microsoft may even announce it uh, this spring slash early summer maybe sometime in June so the next question from Jamie Gonzalez uh, via a YouTube comment is Microsoft interested in getting other arm companies on board with Windows on arm Dan I think this one's for you yeah that's a great question and yeah technically Windows 10 on arm does not mean Qualcomm now, Qualcomm has tried to rebrand it a few times as Snapdragon on Windows, and no one was buying that. But they are the number one chip maker here for ARM in the world, so they are the de facto supplier. That said, a company like MediaTek could get on board and make a Windows device. We already hear rumors that Samsung will be bringing its Exynos, I guess, I think I pronounced that right, I'm not sure, process later this year to Windows laptops. In fact, Samsung is someone to watch in this space. Now their chips are not as good as Qualcomm and the Snapdragon 888. That said, this latest generation of their chips is catching up rapidly and is almost on parity. In fact, sometimes they get a little bit better battery life, but that's also because they get slightly worse performance. But that's where it gets interesting you know, a few years ago, 2019, Samsung struck a deal with AMD to license some of its technology for GPUs with its ARM processors. Well, we may finally get to see that later this year if the rumors hold true. That means, yes, we may get an ARM chip running on the Samsung hardware with an AMD GPU. Now, what does that mean for performance? I don't want to oversell this. It's not going to be like a GeForce RTX level GPU, but it could give a little extra edge to Samsung. Now, we also heard Huawei was playing in this space, too, as they, too, make their own chips. 
but I believe that's probably been put on ice a little bit since tensions between the United States and China have sort of cooled off with Huawei here and licensing technology. So we may have to wait to see if that comes later on if tensions cool. But you know, Windows on ARM is a slow burn technology. As it grows and if it gets more popular, you will see more companies jump on board. So let's just uh, see and wait what happens. But Samsung is the one to watch here. Now, before we get to the final question, I'd like to take a quick moment to thank this video sponsor, Surfshark. So what is Surfshark, I hear you ask? Well, it's a VPN service that's super easy to use as it automatically connects you to a server that offers you the best speeds by default. It's also jam packed with features that focus on security, privacy, streaming and entertainment, and travel. Use Surfshark to watch your favorite region restricted shows on Netflix or BBC iPlayer, or use it to encrypt your browsing data so that your internet service provider can't snoop on what you're doing. It's also available on all popular platforms and can be used on an unlimited number of devices at the same time. You can get Surfshark today by heading to surfshark.deals forward slash Windows Central and entering promo code Windows Central will net you 83% off and three extra months for free. Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring this video and now to the final question. Next up is Jeremy from YouTube Comments who asks, what is our daily driver for our smartphone? Zach, why don't you go first? I use a Surface Duo. I'm crazy enough to do it, but I actually love this thing. Yes, it's buggy. Yes, it's expensive. Although if you're in the US, you can actually get it for quite a bit off now. But in the UK and elsewhere, it's still very expensive. But I love this thing. The, cam the camera's terrible, uh, but the, the use case for dual screens really comes to life on this device. You know, I, I laughed when Panos Panay on stage originally said that it's not just about extra screen real estate, it's about defined real estate. That The divide down the middle was a selling point to him. And at first I thought that's crazy, it's just because you know it's a technical flaw because you can't do a dual, uh, affordable display. No, he's right, defined real estate actually makes a difference. The fact that it's forcing me to use two screens and use two apps at once actually makes me more productive and it makes me multitask. On a Samsung Galaxy Fold, which I did own at one point, I never multitasked, I just used one app on the big screen and Android is terrible on big screens. So I actually really like the, the use case for this. Yes, it's buggy, it does need to be improved, uh, but um, so far, I think it's great. Uh, same answer, Surface Duo. So I also have the cool little dbrand skin on here. Uh, you know, one reason I'm able to use this device, and I agree with everything you said, it, I just, its limitations don't bother me. And partly that's because of the pandemic. I just haven't had to leave my house very often. So things like the camera just don't really bother me because I'm not out there documenting things on, say, business trips, which I usually do. So the limitations are actually almost okay for me this year. Now, we do expect a much better camera system with version 2. So... And that's right when things are going to start picking up again with the economy. So, you know, it should be a better experience. But overall, I just really enjoy it. And it works. I mean, it is the key to my car. I drive a Tesla, so it does that. I can check my emails on it, text messages. I can take phone calls with it. It does all the things I actually need to do. And it actually does help me work better. Plus, it is kind of fun every time I bring it out into, say, the supermarket when I got to scan my super card there. Uh, I always get questions about it and it gives me a little chance to talk about technology. Everybody's super impressed by it and really intrigued. That said, I do have multiple SIMs. So, you know, my other phone is the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G, which is just fun to say. I did a review of this device, basically called it the everything phone of 2020 because as the name implies it really has everything on board that doesn't mean and i also have the iphone 12 mini uh I, that doesn't mean i double carry phones with me uh i used to do that just because it was kind of fun but um i don't really care anymore again i just use the duo when i'm out and about if there's a I'm doing something like going out for today on a bike ride and going to look at, you know, hiking mountains or something. I'll probably take the Note 20 with me because of the camera, but not because of the phone itself. I'll just use it basically as a portable camera with 5G. Uh, so yeah, Surface Duo it is for, for me and I expect to use the Duo version 2 later this year as well. All right, so that does it for the first episode of Ask Windows Central. Now, bear with us as we figure out this format. It's a little weird for us. We're going to try to keep them shorter next time, but these were some lingering questions that we want to start this series off. Now, if you have questions, you can, of course, reach me at Twitter at Daniel underscore Rubino, R-U-B-I-N-O, or follow Zach at Z-A-C-B-O-W-D-E-N, and we'll see if we can pick yours there. And if you don't have Twitter, that's okay. You can email us at 
askdan at windowscentral.com. We'll also get your questions in YouTube comments as well. So leave them there. Tell us how we can improve the show and what you want to hear. As always, thanks for listening. Take care, everyone.